Last month, during one of the professional day, my colleagues and I decided to go out for lunch. We just picked up one fast, casual restaurant, just nearby place. There was an unexpected incident happened. My colleague got her bill, and she was paying her bill. She got her bill of $9.86. So she took out a $10 bill and a penny and gave it to a cashier and asked him, hey, here's my bill. Why not you give me a nickel and dime back? Cashier was shocked. He just looked at my colleague and was just checking. What did you say? And suddenly my colleague just looked at me because she thought she made a mistake. She looked at me and just checked. Vibha, did I do my math correct? I said, yeah, you're absolutely right. You did nothing wrong. There we were, an unexpected situation. Somehow, we managed the situation and we walked away. But we overheard the cashier saying, that's why I don't like people when they pay by cash. Life is so easy when they just swipe their cards. Then I don't have to deal with these changes. We had a sigh moment for a second. Really? Let me share another story with you. It's very personal. Last summer, I was with my family, and my husband got a call regarding my daughter's phone number or something. So he just looked at my daughter and asked her, hey, what's your phone number? I was changing expression on her face, how it's changing. Of course, she gave her number to my husband, but she was waiting for my husband to finish the call. As soon as my husband finished the call, she confronted him. Dad, do you really don't know my number? And my husband said, you know what? I know your number, but I have not said it loud for a while, so I was not sure whether do I remember your number or not. So I just checked it. It's better. Let me check with you. But this moment made me to think, if I lose my phone, then I will be in a situation that I can call only to my family. I won't be able to call anybody besides my family because I don't remember anybody's number. And I'm from the generation where I used to memorize everybody's number. Of course, that time, the contact list was not as long as what I have stored on my number, my cell phone right now. But as soon as I see the number, I will try to see the connection. I'll try to find the numbers. There are several other examples, if I want to quote. They all lead to a big question. Are we, are we going through a numeracy crisis? The things which were a part of a common practice have been deteriorated. We no longer want to deal with numbers anymore. I'm going to a restaurant, calculating 15% tip, I have cell phone. Why should I do it? How many username and password? Username is easy to remember. How about password? I prefer to hit on the forgot password button in order to create every time new password. How many password I'm going to remember? If I'm on social media, da, 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 tons of these things are there. I'm here at school. I have Schoology. I have a backpack. I have a this. How many password I'm going to remember? So nowhere we want to deal with these numbers. This is really a question that we have stopped thinking about the power of our own brain, which can really give us a mental math ability. 
let me share with you how I deal with these things. What are the practices I have adopted whenever I have to improve my number sense? So whenever I see a number, I try to find a relative location up here in my mind. Here's the number 1 to 100. So just an example. I take a number 51. So I try to see where this number 51 is on 1 to 100, this chart, up here in my mind. I see it. 51 is right here, 1 up from 50, 9 away from 60. What else I can say about this number 51? Yeah, 51 is an odd number. Anything else? Yeah, 51 is a 3 times 17. They both are prime numbers. It's, it's a product of two numbers. The idea of what I'm sharing with you, I try to see that how different way I can look at the same number 51. 51 is just not a 51. Their multiplication table itself is a pattern. If you multiply any number by 9, you will find, is it a pattern? If you multiply any number by 11, is it a pattern? So wherever I see the number, I try to find a pattern. Let me share one example with you. Suppose if I have to multiply, here is the example. I'm doing this multiplication. I want to multiply 23 times 11. And this is just one of the way I'm sharing with you. And it's not that, like, this is the only way to do it. No, there are so many different ways you can do multiplication. So here's the number, 23 times 11. I'm multiplying it. And I said answer, 253. You can say, did I memorize this number? No, I didn't. I did a trick. Let me share with you. So here's the answer. Answer is 253. What I did. So the number is 23. So I wrote this 23 number, the extremes as a part. In the middle, 2 and 3. So I added 2 and 3, then the number becomes 5. My answer is right here, 253. This is the power of mental math. When we are talking about doing mental math, we are not talking about let's deal with the tons of number in your head. No, no, no. Take it very easy. Let's just deal with the number 1 to 20, if you can handle it. When you get the confidence, here's the number 1 to 20, I can deal in my, in my head in a different, different ways. Move on. Try 20 to 30. But this will build your confidence, and you will see the power of mental math. Are you ready for another example? Let's see another example. Here's the example I'm sharing with you. I want to find a square of a number ending in 5. 35 squared. It's a big number. Again, answer is, which I have not memorized, is 1,225. What did I do? Ready for the trick? Here you go. Let's see that. So what I did, 35 is the number. Everyone knows the 5 squared is 25. I wrote a 25. Here's the number 3. I added 1 to that number, becomes 4. 4 times 3, easy for me to do calculation, 1,225. Here is my answer. So this is just one of the way to do that. Here you can think differently. It's not, I understand completely. When I'm dealing with a traditional multiplication thing, I get bored. I'm not enjoying it. But look at the same number. Look for the patterns. Look for the different, different way you can think about it. You will enjoy math then. Let's talk about it. What is the science behind this learning? Your brain knows how to learn just as your lungs know how to breathe. So when you learn something new, then in your brain, from the neurons, a thread-like shape grows. So one day, that's called dendrites. So one dendrite grows, then another dendrite grows. So when you are practicing something only once or twice, then the connection between these two dendrites is weak. Now you have stopped practicing. What happens now? Connection gets wider, wider, until it breaks. By this time, 
you have already forgotten your new skill. Now, you are solving how to add two fractions. So you are developing a dendrite only for adding up fractions. And you watch your friend adding up fractions. So you are developing a dendrite to watching doing fractions, not for practicing. So practicing and watching, you develop different dendrites for it. And suppose if you're practicing something in a wrong way, what happens at that time? You are developing dendrite for doing it in a wrong way. That's why we suggest you check your answer time to time. That's why we suggest you why practice is more important for it. So now, so there is a science behind your learning. Now, what, when you incorporate these skills in your daily practice, you will see that you, rem you understand better, you remember longer, and you forget less. I have experience in my classroom that whenever I have to introduce any new topic, I never face any problem. Because my students are always very curious, energetic, ready to learn the new things. Sometimes it is disappointing to see that they give up on mental math. They rely on their calculator result more than their own brain. Technology is comfort. Technology to enhance your learning experiences. Technology is an application of scientific knowledge. Technology is to make your life easy. However, how advanced we grow in technology, but being a learner, you still need a transparency level skills in problem solving, creativity, and analytical thinking. How can you get these skills? Have a better number sense. You can control on these skills. You can improve on these skills. Every year, at the beginning of new school year, these are the common sentences I hear from my students. Hey, Miss Singh, telling you, math is not my favorite subject. I don't like math. Math is not fun. I don't enjoy math. Students are full of preconceived notions. Engaging students, those who are already discouraged, is an uphill battle for me. I believe if my students know more about how numbers interact, if my students have more power on mental math, they would have believed in themselves more. By improving your mental math knowledge, by improving your number sense, math can be fun. Mental math, irrelevant of its an application, it's an excellent way to stimulate your own mind. Your left brain focuses on logic, math, theories, and structures. Your right brain focuses on creativity, intuitions, imaginations, and patterns. As soon as you see that numbers interact, you start looking for patterns. You are doing exercise for your left brain. You are doing exercise for your right brain. Your left brain and your right brain, they incorporate with each other in order to produce the best result. Having a better number sense leads us to a new perspective. The choices you make and the actions you take Discover the result in life. It's in your control. Are you up for the challenge? That's all from me. Thank you.